TEDx. Um, if it's okay, I'd like to start off with a little confession. So when I was a little kid, I was just, just a little bit, a little weird. <laughs> I didn't say it was a startling confession, but a confession nonetheless. But you know how kids are often obsessed with very unusual topics? Sometimes they're into dinosaurs, others are into outer space or even fire trucks. Well, for me, my obsession was a little bit different. I loved the post office. I was obsessed with the mail. <laughs> sure. This is my favorite book, The Jolly Postman. <laughs> and this was my favorite toy, my Sesame Street mail truck. Now, don't judge. I still have it on my desk at home. Every day after school, I would rush home and wait for the mailman to come. <laughs> Honest, true, 100% true. And now the irony is, I was a little kid. I didn't actually get anything that interesting in the mail. Maybe if I was lucky, a birthday card. Maybe a gift at Christmas. Maybe. But I used to love flipping through my parents' mail. Catalogs, junk mail, bills, letters. And what I realized is it made me feel, as a, a kid growing up in a small town, it made me realize that there was a larger world out there. And that just as importantly, I could be part of that world. After college, my first real job is, no, you probably can't guess, it's delivering the mail. <laughs> I went to work for the post office. It was great. It was, I was a letter carrier. It was a great job. I still often think about it fondly. And going door to door every day in Brookline, Massachusetts, I realized something. I realized that my childhood fascination of loving the mail wasn't actually that unusual. There's a lot of other weirdos like me out there, <laughs> folks who couldn't wait to see the mailman every day, who love getting the mail. And I know it's easy to dismiss the post office as something that's trivial and passe, an old technology that's far outlived its usefulness. But seeing how much it meant to people, and more importantly, seeing how much people really needed it, it gave me pause. I'll never forget my first week on the job, I met this very cute elderly woman. And I delivered to her a uh, birthday card from her daughter in Washington State. It made her day. She was absolutely thrilled to get it. And she told me something that I haven't forgotten. It was 10 years ago, and I still remember it. She told me that most days, the letter carrier was the only person she saw. I was the only person she saw most days. It really stuck with me. And that's when I realized that the postal system, it's a network, but it's also a tether. It connects us together in a daily ritual. And mixed in with the junk mail and the catalogs and even the bills is something that's a little bit more important, a connection to a larger world out there. Now, to be sure, the current state of the post office is precarious. The future looks a little bit bleak. <laughs> In the midst of unspooling tweets, constant Facebook updates, text messages, and email, snail mail can seem like it's going to go the way of VHS tapes and the rotary phone. It's an old technology that we can remember, but it's not something we really use anymore. Uh, a recent glance at even the headlines tells part of the story, billions of dollars lost possibility of large-scale uh, postal closings. Maybe we can now start to imagine a time when the post office doesn't exist, at least not in the form that we're used to. Just a few miles from here, some of you may recognize this photo. The Hoya post office is scheduled to be closed. One of over 3,000, 3,000 local post offices that are set to be shuttered. Now, the economic woes tell part of the story, but it's not the whole story. For many, the post office still matters. It's still vitally important. It still serves a purpose and there's a fight on to save it. As new technologies find their ways into our pockets, onto our desktops, and into our homes, maybe even into our brains, if we remember one of the earlier talks, um, it's important to remember that technologies never march in a straight line, and that gaps in access still remain. For many of the most marginalized in our society, the elderly, the poor, those living in rural communities, the post office isn't just an antique. It's not just a cute historical curiosity. It's not even a hobby. It's a lifeline. It's a safety net. It's still critically important for them. It provides them with things that they can't get other places, goods and services, information, even medicines. And when we talk about cutting postal service, we talk about scaling back, to them, it's not just an academic interest. It's something that is really life and death. It really matters. Now, sure, there's other delivery services out there, FedEx, UPS, and they're great. I use them all the time. When I order things on Amazon, books, DVDs, they usually come to my house via FedEx or UPS. But they're businesses. The post office is a service. It's a different obligation, a different orientation. 
It provides a tangible daily reminder of what it means to belong to a community. It tells those that are otherwise marginalized that they matter, they are accounted for, and they are included. We talk about getting rid of the post office or scaling it back. This is what we're talking about, removing the safety net, cutting the tether that connects us to them. Recently, my wife and I and our dog, Boomer, moved away from California back to the East Coast. It is very good to be back, let me just say that. <laughs> the trip was long. Finding an apartment, a new home, was predictably incredibly difficult. I think we looked at every rental house in the metro Boston area before we found one that we liked. We certainly tried the patience of our friends and our relatives as we crashed on their couches for weeks. But we finally found a place that we liked and moved in. As we started to unpack, we put pictures on the wall, set up our furniture, it started to look like home. All our stuff was there, but it still felt a bit alien. It still felt like we were visitors in someone else's home. About a week later, our forwarded mail started to arrive with the telltale yellow labels, mail arriving from California. At first, it was just bills and magazines, and then about a week ago, we received our first Christmas card, and now they've been trickling in. And reading our names uh, written on those cards, Seeing them, it made me realize that for the first time, this new place was starting to feel just, just a little bit more like home. Thank you. <laughs>